Good morning, early explorers. Tiffany here again. Um, happy May the 4th, and may the 4th be with you. As we think about the stars, I thought it would be fun to take a little poetic journey through space with our book this morning called Once Upon a Star. This was written by James Carter and illustrated by Mar Hernandez. So let's jump right in. As the lid is lifted off the world, the day goes quiet, dark, and cold. Then down comes night, and if cloud-free, look up, you'll find the galaxy. 100 billion, maybe more, lights like lanterns on a shore. Giants they are, and from so far, they just seem small. We call them stars. And we have one, it's called the sun. But did you know, it's where we're from. There's more of that as you'll soon see. Now let's head back through history. Once upon a star, there were no stars to shine, no sun to rise, no sun to set, no day, no night, nor any time. There was no earth nor universe until a great explosion burst. A mighty boom, a huge kerrang, that scientists call the Big Bang. So then what? Everything. As all of space and time began, very slowly, first of all, the universe had to cool. A sea of stars at last were born. Gradually, they fired and formed. Out of clouds of dust and gas, each a mighty, sparky mass. And one of these became our sun. Our solar system had begun. Giant rocks and fire blew. And so in time, our planets grew. And right down here, our Earth did too, with skies so wide and oceans blue. Then life swam, crawled, flew. And still our sun gives us delight, our warmth, our food, our daily light. It's at the heart of everything around the sun the planets spin. We're from that star that seems so far. We're made of stardust. Yes, we are. So, what are you? You're a star. So now just a few little science facts to go along with our poem this morning. The sun, our star, was born in a nebula almost 5 billion years ago. Huge amounts of gas and dust began to form a cloud. Eventually, as the cloud grew bigger, gravity caused it to whirl around and flatten. Spinning around, it formed a clump in the center called a protostar, which would become our sun. Ultimately, five billion years into the future, our sun will finally collapse. Near the end of its life, the sun will eat up Mercury, Venus, and even Earth as it becomes a massive superstar known as a red giant. But that is going to happen way, way in the future. So, just want to thank everybody for joining us this morning for story time. And don't forget to check out our fun uh, do-it-yourself activity that will be coming up in just a little bit with Bethany. Hope you have a great May the 4th, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.